Uh, Madam Speaker, tomorrow is the State of the Province Address, and two years ago at that event, the Premier announced the Premier's Enterprise Council, and then a year later, the Premier provided a sneak preview of the results of a Deloitte study, which found that, I quote, the province is unable to articulate a forward-looking vision for the Manitoba economy. As a result, industry, academia, and peer governments are uncertain how to best to engage with the government of Manitoba, end quote. It's a complaint I've heard directly from many stakeholders, Madam Speaker, but it took the Premier a year and a half and $150,000 to figure it out. I expect the Premier will announce a new plan to plan tomorrow. My question is, whatever happened to the Premier's Enterprise Council he announced two years ago? The Honourable First Minister. I I appreciate a question from the member that doesn't involve a request for a larger office. (laughs) (laughs) The Enterprise team has been meeting regularly, and they're one of literally hundreds of uh, various groups and individuals that uh, have been met uh, by uh, David Angus and uh, Barbara Gammy, who uh, have co-authored the uh, economic development strategy that we'll be releasing tomorrow, Madam Speaker. And I, on behalf of, I hope, all of us and all Manitobans, I want to thank them for their tremendous efforts. The Honourable Leader of the Second Opposition on a supplementary question. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I, I do believe Manitoba can do much better, but there are storm clouds on the economic horizon. The Business Council of Manitoba made it clear that this is a time to invest in Manitoba, and the Manitoba Employers Council 2018 report lays out some important challenges for Manitoba. Of our four neighbouring provinces, we are last in GDP per capita, we have the lowest post-secondary graduation rate, we have the lowest weekly earnings, and we have the highest migration rate. What Manitoba should be focusing on more than anything is investing in good jobs of good pay. That will drive the economy, attract people and get them to stay, and increase government revenues. But instead, this government is passing laws to make it easier to pay people less, even as they give themselves raises and tax cuts. Does this Premier see that temporary part-time jobs with bad pay and no benefits are the cause of Manitoba's economic woes and not the solution? The Honourable First Minister. Well, I I appreciate the member asking a question about uh, something he's familiar with, which is uh, temporary and part-time jobs, Madam Speaker, but the fact remains that we lead the country in average weekly wage growth, so I don't accept his preamble. What I would say, Madam Speaker, is that what we're concerned about is making sure that Manitobans who want to work have the dignity of work, and we want to make sure they have the rewards of that work as well. That's why we're doing a great job of holding the line on tax increases while others around us choose to raise theirs. Madam Speaker, that is something the member does advocate, by the way, higher taxes. And I want to uh, give him the opportunity to explain to Manitobans how that equates to helping people in their homes and in their small businesses. His position on higher taxes isn't something we agree with. We're pushing for lower taxes and more money on the kitchen tables of Manitoba families. The Honourable Leader of the Second Opposition on a final supplementary. Uh, Madam Speaker, the austerity policies this government is offering are not new. They failed before and they will fail again. In the last 10 years, every single jurisdiction that has tried austerity has ended up deeper in debt with a slower economy. We need to invest and grow and accelerate our way out of debt. The government's own projections are that this eco- their economy, Manitoba, sorry, that Manitoba's economy will slow over the next two years. This government has been dependent on federal transfers, rating hydro, and cuts to try to balance the budget. In July, this government's growth projection for this year is 1.9%, for next year 1.7%. Standard & Poor's downgraded Manitoba twice under this government for not having a plan to balance the budget and for announcing they would rely entirely on cuts with no plan to bring in more revenue. Does the Premier see that his government's policy of cut first and ask questions later with no plan for growth is slowing Manitoba's economy and making it more susceptible in event of a downturn? The Honourable First Minister. Just hilariously dumb preamble, Madam Speaker, and totally wrong. Uh, In fact, we lead the country in investing in the compassionate departments of government on a per capita basis. Order. Wrong. We hold the line on tax increases, Madam Speaker, while the member advocates they should go up. And he is always advocating for a federal government strategy, which has now, uh, instead of balancing the federal books, uh, created deficit situations in the excess of approximately $20 billion a year. So he talks about priming the pump of the economy by borrowing more and taxing more and claims he has a new idea. (coughs) Those are old ideas, Madam Speaker. They are failures, and we're not following them. 
Instead, we're working in partnership with the private sector to see the economy grow, and that is exactly what is happening, right. Madam Speaker, and it will continue. Here, here.